harmony with the land until the tyrants defiled it. But when they shattered our spirit, we became sharpest at the break. We are the defenders of the First Lands, and we remember the cost of peace. So, napaganda talaga ng performance ng Messi para sa amin and malaking pressure yun sa amin. Pero nakikita namin si Jay Jun na i-shutdown dahil siya yung halos focus ng mapa eh. Parang gumagawa na din kami ng game plan para tignan yung rotations niya, then makapag-adjust kami bawat lanes. Tapos practice na lang yung mga magagawa naming bagong rotations para sa kanila. Welcome back mga summers. Tayo nagbabalik dito sa 2018 Bacchus Pro Gaming Series Spring Split Final kung saan malalaman natin sino ang magre-represent sa ating bansa sa upcoming na GPL. Syempre, kami ang magiging shoutcast niyo. My name is Chiso and with me is Arctic. Yes, and man, tricky 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 situation for TNC right now. I mean, with their situation right here. I mean, it's been quite a buzz here in the community as of recent, mm. pero Alam mo, nakarelate rin naman ako sa situation nila because I've been a manager before for a PGS team and andun talaga yung mga constraints in a way of really needing to meet yeah, all that paperwork and yeah, really there's a lot a of hassle. paperwork involved and in all fairness naman though I think it's a great learning lesson to not just our PGS teams but even to everybody that's aspiring to become mm. professional talent kasi yung process na to like with the um, passports, even rules, everything that's related to PGS as far as dates, rulings, um, it's actually discussed like even before the split starts. So there's like a summit for players, for managers, na talaga like, explain ng committee yung mga guidelines na to. So ayun, um, it's just unfortunate lang talaga na TNC they weren't able to make it into the crunch time given yung mga parameters na yun that was given to them before. But you know, I'm still fingers crossed because I've personally been a fan of TNC throughout the uh, split with their performance. And I mean, maboy Miramos out there, so just have to see how it goes. Yeah, and alam ko maraming tatalong dyan yun nga yung confusion reg uh, regarding kung bakit wala si Demon and si Icarus. Two of the really key members kung yeah. bakit napakaganda nung naging performance ng TNC nung last bit. Unfortunately, they aren't able to play. And I think marami ring tanong na paano nga magperform tong mga sub na to. And I think it was very clear during that first game where. TNC clearly out of sync compared to Minesky who clearly has 
quite an advantage here given that TNC isn't playing with their um, original roster. So a bit of a struggle for TNC. But I think as the best of five progresses, they'll get more and more comfortable and possibly um, try not to come back. Yeah, we'll just have to see. And man, I have to agree with you there. I mean, these two crucial players who have been so consistent throughout the entire group stage. Just heading into this, I mean, in all fairness though, looking at who they have uh, fielded, Okay, Mirmo. I mean, I've been talking about Mirmo right on group stage. Kaito Alana is just a PGS, although is now back. Na, he's been one of my favorite marksmen in just if, the history of professional gaming in the Philippines. So, at least Shop proven because he's worked with AX in the previous play. For the substitutes in the top lane, you know, major shaky pa because like they weren't even fielded during I mean, the tough na situation. Yeah. Rookie pa lang, first game niya pa pasok niya, tapos game one ng finals, especially laban sa Mineski. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of pressure to put on a player. Exactly. You really can't blame him for underperforming quite a bit in that first game. It is his first game, so cut him some slack, guys. I mean, yeah. I saw the chat. Maraming uh, tao medyo nagagalit sa top lane saying he really cost it game one. But I think all around, Mineski just played very, very well and really abused the fact that TNC aren't a full 100%. But hopefully into this game too, medyo nag-sync in na sa TNC na, okay, maybe our synergy will be better. Nakita yeah. na natin kung ano yung kayang gawin ng Mineski. We're gonna adjust for game two and lalaban pa tayo dito. Yeah, and I think that's one of the benefits na nagkakapaglaro kayo sa best of five. And I have to agree with you. I mean, um... It's already pressure as is to enter the PGS like midway through it. What more pa kaya? Like, lit I mean, for our die, that was the case. Like, yeah. midway what, what through. What more pa kaya kung nasa importante exactly. ka ng best of five for this film? But, least, but it's like, come yeah, on, guys. it looks like we're going to go directly here in the pick and ban phase. What are we pick ng mga teams to ask? It looks like Maftit will actually be subbed out by TNC for Caroline. So, another new player for TNC. Let's see how pa we can pan out to. Ezreal? Ooh, Ezreal priority. And yeah, it's interesting that we are going to be seeing uh, another one of PNC's uh, players fielded out uh, in the form of Caroline here. It's interesting for TNC because um, for the substitutes that they've um, been fielding for the top lane, I mean, we've both been pretty much aware of players in the semi-pro scene going into pro so but this is like one of the few instances na they're not really players I'm familiar with so I'm really interested in seeing how um, this time for Caroline how he's gonna perform this time yeah and it's actually interesting that TNC decided to pick up Ezreal first pick here for Mirmo given that Kalista is actually open and I mean, wouldn't be surprised to see TNC pick up that champion so very interesting start for the pick in bad phase they did give up the Galio and the Camille as well for Mineski and we know how scary a Camille and Galio combo can be because you just put the Hextech ultimate and the Galio immediately points out on the Camille. You just jump down and it's basically a bouncy castle and there's no way out because it is Camille's ultimate. There's really no getting away from that. Pretty much, man. But still, within the second rotation, looks like uh, quite the heavy priority once again mm. onto Haze. This is the second rotation of Bans that are coming sa Mineski will st heavy jungle bans naman coming in from TNC so they want to try to slow down June here but looks like they will be contending themselves with the Skarner which is pretty much left open for the taking yeah and mukhang yung magiging matchup na dadali ni Burst dito sa jungle into the Skarner will be that Rek'Sai gonna try to match that clear speed because Skarner as a jungler feeling go one of the fastest clear speeds in the game but I think Rek'Sai can match that really well it looks like um, Hayes will be stealing away the Syndra, though it is not EXO playing in this game for Mineski. It will be Hamas back into the mid lane. It will be a Syndra and Galio matchup. A Stresh will be the final lock-in for Mineski. Another aggressive support for TG to show off his playmaking ability. Yeah, and for those of you that have been following Mineski, we know how to do it. We know how to do it. He's a player, CTG. He's made a lot of plays. Um, that were quite pivotal to Mineski's victories. In fact, I think there were even times na pinara lang, pina okay, that's a deep word for me. <laughs> he was awarded the MVP title because of what he was able to do with this champion. So, yeah, we'll just have to see how this goes. Yeah, and looking at how both of these team comps have panned out, it looks like TNC, they have a severe lack of engage, so it'll be very tricky for them to actually start fights here given that their comp lacks that um, CC. Compared to Mineski, you have a million ways to start fights. Yeah, and I guess here we go, guys. This is it once again, the finals. It's all coming down to the wire here. Let us know, of course, kung sino ang sino support lahan niyo dito. Basis sa, kung ano yung naging draft or 
just release your inner fandom right here. Be sure to give whoever team you're supporting all the energy that you have. Hashtag TNC win ba for TNC pro team or hashtag MSK win para naman dito sa Mineski. And syempre, yun nga, Mineski, they are up 1-0 in this best of five. May ita natin. Ano kaya ang kayang gawin nito na TNC in this game too? Mm -hmm. I am indeed wondering. But talking about what has transpired here, I mean, I think with this, uh, with the changes that we're seeing from TNC, um, we'll just have to see how it transpires here. Hopefully, we see better results going into this game here. But of course, it'll all come down to execution as we head on to the rift. Vegan man, the games are just gonna get all the more intense once again as we head into game two of the 2018 Bacchus Pro Gaming Series Spring Finals. This is once again TNC Pro Team versus Mineski. Yeah, may ita natin as we head on to the rift. Kung ano ang kaya ng ibat na ng TNC in that first game, it looked like they struggled a lot. There's really no other way to put it. Hopefully, mahakabaw sila. Papasok dito sa pangalawang laban natin ngayon. Okay, so of course, what's interesting though is, I mean, we've been talking about how Mirmo, what his experience is for Caroline though. For those of you that aren't familiar with him, um, he was actually one of the champions, one of the five players that won as a champion of the recent Lenovo League of Champions. So he was part of Red Light. So in all fairness, I think that was the team that they went up against Espionage. So that was the team that Endless Ace was on. Yeah, it's so, a bit of lore right there. Yeah. A bit of a history lesson. And yeah, I think hopefully for this game, another new player won't um, have the same unfortunate performance as yes. Math did in the first game. And I think, you know what, the good thing about Caroline here is that I mean, since she's the champion of Lenovo League of Champions, they can compete abroad. So, I mean, um, it's not necessarily professional international experience, but mm -hmm. at least that's the tested na scenario. Na he knows how to play in these type of pressure scenarios. So, it's a little bit of a plus. Naman. At least we know that he wouldn't get phased right away just by the... Um, what's at stake here? Yeah, and same goes for Mirma actually. He's also competed overseas, so definitely sub-80 carry. But yeah, hopefully for this game, I want to see the makabawi of TNC so that we get to see a very competitive series. I'd have to agree with you Because after Game 1, Arctic, I mean, that was very one-sided. The way that Mineski played. It was a nearly perfect game, aside from the few kills that they did drop. Yeah, and I think that's one of the tricky scenarios. Um, especially, like, you want to try to look for ways to make makabawi of TNC, but you have to just kind of tell it as it is. Nah, it was just Mineski playing that absolutely overwhelmingly. But we'll just have to see. Looking at adjustments here so far, oh, no. though, DJ, he's gonna get the hook onto Miramo right there. Miramo is just forced to flex his way out of there. We'll get a few hits there onto TG in retaliation, but man, that's quite a bit of damage that Miramo took after that hook. Yeah, in the end, it's actually one summoner burned by Mineski to zero from PNC. Buti na lang nag-level 2 kagad si Miramo dun, or else that trade could have gone even worse. Yeah, and that's definitely not something that TNC does not want to happen. Just starting off on the wrong foot in this game, especially having come off quite a dominant game for Mineski in Game 1. So, we'll just have to see how this goes down. Meanwhile, towards top side, uh, looks like Kaiju just actually... It's pretty balanced out here. Yeah, and I'm going to go back to pick and ban phase. Kung saan. The TNC, sa line of the TNC, there's a severe lack of engage. Wala silang options for hard CC unless, of course, Burst goes for a flash knockoff. But that's it. Yeah. Compare that to Mineski, they have the Camille to dive onto people, the Skarner, the Thresh. Even their AD carry has options to engage. So if TNC falls behind here, it's going to be very difficult for them to actually try and force something Ooh. to get something back. Yeah, speaking of getting something back right there, that's gonna be the heal forced out of Mirimu to make sure Orthros lives, but looks like Burst is gonna try to go for something here. They try to chase down TG as well as Gary, but to no avail though. No casualties just yet, guys. Yeah, no flashes, but just the heals from both AD carries. Orthros actually, I correct myself, he did lose both his summoners, so kailangan niya mag-ingat. It looks like TG has been on point with his hook so far. Yeah. Like you mentioned, papakita niya yung playmaking ability niya on Thresh. 
And of course, that's just the value that Nesky gets out of having this Thresh for TG. But oh, luckily, I mean, for TNC Spot 9, they were able to hold their own in a sense na so far, I mean, with all the sets coming in from TG, wala pa rin, um, casualty. I think I could attribute that second one though. So, luckily, under the presence of burst towards the bot side na napilitan pag back si Gary at si TG. But other than that though, I mean, definitely a lot of Mineski across the map here so far. Ooh. Oh, that's unlucky. Forced to bring your flash immediately. Kakatapos mo na mag TP. Tapos bigla nandun yung jungler. Napaka... Could be a tilter right there for Caroline. But still, he hasn't died. So that's a good sign. He is playing the Gangplank though, so we know Gangplank as a champion scales towards late game. You want to get your Trinity Force, possible Infinity Edge, and really just survive the laning phase because you don't have vis uh, you don't have business fighting a Camille this early into the game. Yeah, and overall though, I think PNC has been holding out, but for Caroline here, it might be a bit trickier because Malivan's the summoner is down. I mean, he's already starting to fall a little bit back there in terms of CS, but meanwhile, Gary will be forced to flash away as he makes it under the safety of his turret. Yeah, hindi magkasabay yung back timer ni TG Chan Gary. That's why the virus was forced to burn his flash. And looking at the Howling Gale from Ortho, it looks like he tried to predict the flash from the virus, pointing it towards a more forward direction as both junglers will put themselves here. Yes, indeed. But oh, Burst actually tries to get a dive in there onto June, but will just kind of talk him away uh, uh, from the side of his jungle. June is up one level compared to Burst, though, so that's a good sign. It looks like that single gank attempt by Burst in the bot lane put him behind by one camp, so the Skarner closer to hitting level 6, and we all know what Skarner does when they hit level 6 arc there. Yeah. You can just go for those ganks with the Impale. No QSS this early in the game as Burst will Whoa, be forced to flash. Oh, Burst was indeed forced to flash, and of course, if that if he wasn't able to flash out of that, that would have been deadly right there with that response from Hamas. Pero, lucky enough, Nakapag flash early on, so he's A-OK. -okay. Yeah, but like I mentioned, you'd like to set up no meron tung TNC if they want to force anything. It's just a flash knockup from the Rek side. So with the flash down, that's one option gone. So mukang mupapa uh mupapa back lang in TNC where they really can't force any fights and their gank attempts have been severely hindered. Yes, and this is kinda tricky because if you're gonna look at uh, PNC's composition guy ang na mention mo. As far as going full 5v5, that might be a bit trickier because there's a lot of things that, because of PNC's lack of crowd control, lack of actual set, um, could be tricky. I mean, they do have crowd control. It's just that they It's not reliable. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't have that same set potential that Mineski has. Na para lang options actually. If anything, what? Does kind of salvage this composition ng TNC is yung disengage na manggaling kay Orthros. But other than that, as for uh, trying to pull fights in their favor, they almost have to need to overwhelm Mineski with damage right off the bat. Bago makaset ang Mineski with all the tools that they have working for them. Yeah, and binanggit mo yung disengage na provide ng Janna ni Orthros. That's still a lot of things to disengage, Arctic. Janna only has practically two abilities to keep you away, but looking at the comp Mineski has. That's a lot of CC, but speaking of CC, we're gonna see some now. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna be seeing a lot of fights here coming in from Mineski. As yet again, another fight is taken towards the top side. That will be first blood taken by Mineski. Yeah, that's an easy setup onto the gangplank. Just a practically clean dive from both of Mineski's laners, and Jun didn't even have to burn the impale. No, <laughs> that was quite efficient right there from Mineski. So. This is gonna be the true test for Caroline right here with that gank forward stop side. How well can he at least hold out until the later phases? Yes, we na natin. I mean, not just that kill, but even in terms of CS difference, major nagbe build up na talaga pabor dito kay Kaigu. Like, no, there's no flash with burst. Oh, burst. Looks like they're gonna go straight for TG, but teleport is coming in from Mineski. The response is coming in. Both Kaigu as well as Ham has joined the party. Fortunately, Burst is gonna be the first one to fall. Orthos is looking very low as well. He will be popped by Miro to make sure that his support lives Here to tell the tale. Jun. But June, he's not done just yet. He wants in on Orthros. He will get knocked up though. Looks like June has found a new target in the form of Mirmo. That's gonna be four members of Mineski converging onto that marksman. He gets pulled in and down he goes as June gets the kill. And what ends in a two for nothing? Oh, Mineski play that so well. Such a clean dive onto the bot lane of TNT. The aggro swapping was perfect for them. And they all get out alive. Look at the health bars. Nobody dying means that this dive will net them the first start of the game. Mineski, they look like they're running away with this. Yeah, this is so tricky. 
for TNC right now. Napaganda ng resolve ng kung gaano ka-resolute yung galawan ng Mineski so far. Very much definitive and pretty almost virtually clean right there. So I'm wondering, TNC, they really need to start trying to push for something. Because sabi natin, if they can't, considering their composition, then it could be a bit trickier as this game goes along. I feel like that's the advantage that they really need to start forcing at least just to make up for what could be a deficiency mamaya pagdating ng mga team fight. Yeah, and looking at the early game and how it has banned out for Mineski, this is really where their team shines. Sila yung best early game teams uh PGS and it looks like they're just showing off what they can do and really picking on TNC because looking at TNC's comp, like I mentioned, it's very difficult for them to set up anything this early unless Burst can really find those perfect opportunities for Ganks. Pero he went for one in the bot lane, but unfortunately, Mineski just had the answer to that. Yeah, and man, Mineski, these rotations so far, absolutely this guy nga nang nakita natin. Gary and Ticha already making the move na mag-swap into the top side just to push for things even further. And you have to take note, let's go ahead and check out how these kills are concentrated though because si Jumi nakuha ko ng dalawang kills dito sa bot side and I think it's okay considering uh, June could pretty much be continuously influential as far as these lanes go. Now, I think it's great that the Skarner is picking up all the kills. Give him more move speed items, Arctic. Like, pick up the Predator on your... I mean, pick up the upgraded boots, more move speed, possible Righteous Glory in the future. But yeah, it looks like the jungler has been the recipient of majority of the kills. Mm -hmm. Some people prefer, though, that you give it to the carries. Yep. In this case, though, I think it's pretty much justified considering what the value na, na that ni June with this Skarner right now. And very pivotal, I gotta say. So, we'll just have to see how this slowly goes down though. Pero, I mean, we've been talking about a lot of the advantages na napupush ng Mineski so far. Very well played out. Let's go ahead and look at TNC though. Like, how they could try to at least contend with Mineski. Because as far as team fights, I think that's where they're gonna kind of falter. But, looking out of team fights. Oh, binanggit mo na yun nga, merong disengage in this jana. And if Arthurs is able to keep his teammates safe by stopping the fight, but that's not one way to stop fights. Yes. So that's gonna be a full initiate onto Mirimo, but unfortunately, Mineski, they might have overreached that a bit. Meanwhile, though, looks like Burst gets sniped out by Gary. That's a one for one so far. But in deep of Ayang DNC, Gary might actually get locked in right there. Hamas a little bit in too late for the party. That's gonna be Orthro swaying away the members of Mineski. Hamas and June looks like they're gonna want to back away from this battle. They have to start backing off right now. And looks like that fight is gonna end right then and there. Yeah, mohan caster curse in Arctic. Kakasabi mo lang anong pwedeng gawin ng TNC to disengage the fight. And you see there the strength of the Janna able to actually land a three man knockup, I believe, with the Howling Gale. And it stops Mineski in their tracks to try and go for Mimur. Regardless of the hook landing, there was no follow up damage. And TNC were able to turn it around. Just Great play by TNC. They're fighting back. And I think that's what TNC should be capitalizing on. If anything, they have to be a bit calculated para ma-force yung mga advantages nila. Um, oh, oh, gaya nga ng sinasabi natin, ang laking value ng, let's say, Hamas with the Heroes entrance and just all the set potential coming in from Mineski. But if they could, like, time things properly wherein they could estimate na, okay, down ng ultimate, let's say, ni Hamas or Gary couldn't really hold out through his own ultimate, then that could be the window of opportunity na pwedeng i-capitalize ng TNC. Yeah, and dito na tatalo yung Mineski. In the games that they dropped, ah, drop, I'm sorry, <laughs> it was making these small errors that really build up. It wasn't one major mistake. It was a multitude of really tiny errors such as that dive in the top lane that led to them dropping those games. So kung makakakuha pa ng punishes ng TNC, but hey, he's in a bit of trouble. Yes, he is forced to flash away. Looks like Jun and Hamas will back away quite content with that uh, takeaway from his there. Yeah, two summoners burned on a very mobile champion such as the Cinder. Very, very happy with that. Of course, Jun did not have his ult up yet. That's why Hayes was able to get away. But going back to the point I was trying to make, yung mga losses ng Mineski in the regular season, it was mostly due to them making small mistakes. So kung ulitin pa nila yung um, dive dun sa top lane, I think TNC will definitely capitalize on that. That's actually an interesting observation that you brought up. Because that's actually quite true. Kung baga, nagkakaroon ng mga minor mistakes ng Mineski, whether in terms of how they try to push for ganks or even try to overstep a bit by going for risky plays that are trick dives and kind of go south real quick. So that could be a thing here. That could be a factor. And I think 
nagpapakita din naman ng signs na may there could be factors that Mineski whenever they do overstep yan ang pwedeng um kunin na opportunity ng TNC but of course knowing Mineski though that might be a bit tricky oh that's four members of Mineski in the vicinity yeah that was just haste going down that was disgusting that was I, I couldn't even call what was happening there because that was just four members ready to topple off on you yeah and you see what Mineski did there they had complete control of vision there was no wards from TNC placed on their blue side jungle hindi nakita ni Hazen eh kahit gano pa siya kandikit sa tower niya there's really no stopping the Camille from diving on top of you and just like that they pick up a kill on Jay just after they burn his summers as Mirmo he's in a bit of trouble yes June just gonna pull him in there right away pero mukhang di pa rin dyan nagtatapos ang Mineski Mirmo he's trying to back away and Kite but unfortunately that's just too overwhelming as Gary gets the kill okay so looking at what Mineski were trying to do there it doesn't work that way where you impale someone in the Garner and you take the Thresh down. You don't go all the way back to Thresh. That's kind of OP. But still, that's a kill onto Mirmo. So that's a big pickup for Mineski. I think they will be able to translate that into this top lane outer tier turret. It's still... Ah, it's gone, John. Yeah, yeah it's pretty much killing down. Unfortunately, nobody uh, from PNC yang can be able to But it looks like they Okay. They so, were denying minions, are yes. there's no gonna Yeah, there's no deny mechanic in the game. So you use to deny them. Meanwhile, looks like Mineski, they're still pushing out this guard. Maybe they're going to go back to Mirmo and Orthros, but still, looking at this though, Mineski have to take note. Kite is kind of workable, but the 2-6 that we can see as far as skills, you have to look at the gold difference, which is really starting to build up subtly in favor of Mineski, already at 5k. It's a bit substantial considering we also see mates in this game. Yeah, assuming that Mineski doesn't make the small tiny error that they did earlier, I think they're gonna be have a comfortable mid game here. As for TNC, the question is how long can they turtle here? Because, like I mentioned, there's not enough engage for them to actually set up anything or force a fight. I mean, kahit metal member you Mineski na out of position, it's gonna be extremely difficult for TNC to force a fight. That's mid lane. Yes. Looks like oh, that's a beautiful hook coming in from TG, and that's just gonna be Haze getting fully locked down by Ramon. Two hundred and ninety-two or those double kill para dito ay Gary, but things aren't done just yet. Ham is gonna go for it straight, knock in onto first. First, he tries to go for Gary. Will he get him though? Looks like he will get restrained though by June, and that's gonna be a full down lockup. Kaidi gets burst, and looks like this might be the cleanup right here for Mineski. Caroline looking very, very low, and that's gonna be the ace for Mineski. Yeah, and for Gary, you, that's definitely worth it. It's only the 80 carry down for Mineski. It's still a clean ace. They absolutely clean up the members of PNC, but looking at how all of that started, it was a pickoff on the haze. He still didn't have both of the summoners. That was way too easy for Mineski. And I think that's just the long term. Nakita nga natin na it's soft. Uh, like spend your flash can in any case and that's the long-term benefit here for Mineski knowing very well that the summoner's down they just go straight in no questions asked and that's gonna be a second tier turret taken that's a lot of value yeah and looking at the replay here this is how it all started wala pang summoners si Haze nung simula lahat so essentially this is all of 4v5 and with the Cinder down the Janna shouldn't be walking up in front of Avaris so they immediately focus her down and at this point it's a 3v5 on the map everyone from PNC just gets singled out I mean, you don't even have to be grouped up because they're just that far ahead. Yes, and oof. I mean, Caroline and Burst, they try to salvage it by at least taking down the low health targets here from SP. But at the end of the day, I mean, an ace, of, that's basically a 5 for 1 that happened. So that's a little bit of an unfortunate circumstance here for TNT. They tried to make the most of that fight, at least, pero it's such a tricky situation there. Yeah, and speaking of tricky situations, are dumadami na yung problema na hinaharap ng TNC dito. The superior vision control of Mineski, the overwhelming crowd control from their team. Mineski are constantly choking out TNC of their options of what they can do to make a comeback. Sobrang hirap na ng position na the pasok ng TNC dito na it's really gonna be difficult to come back, but it's still doable. Exactly, and I think this is TNC. What it's kind of unfortunate here is. You'd want to think na uh, okay, mayro na mga mga tools ang TNC na pwede naman sila mahabawi. It's just that when playing from behind with this composition, it's all the more trickier. Maybe if they had Vinesky's composition, for example, that would have been something to have worked with because at least you have the tools to try to hold off the game as much as possible. But 
Ooh. Okay, that's gonna be Kaigu getting dived on by both first as well as Caroline. But Thomas is gonna go in for the response. That will be a ton. Swanchuli first able to dodge that out though, but still he's taking too much damage from both Kaigu as well as Thomas. But it looks like the rest of TNT they're gonna wanna try to chase down, but it, unfortunately it's not just enough. Dara, will Mineski go for more here? I don't think so. With Gary spit pushing way up in the top lane. Lane yep. is the team, yeah, and five members of Mineski down, but looks like Mineski won't opt for a fight. Yep, they're just gonna let Gary in the meantime. I mean, just not giving a care in the world as to who Anina he had to support. So he's fairly confident with where he's at right now. Just gonna continue to push these advantages. At Dahil Jan, Mineski will be getting the dragon for this game. So. This is starting to become really tricky for TNC because there are avenues that they can just use it, at least even if they can leverage it to get back in the game. It's slowly starting to dwindle out. Yeah, the chance of TNC is getting back to TNC is getting back to TNC. And they're really struggling at the moment, but it looks like they are going to try to hold out here. Looking at what a play they were trying to make bot lane, they tried to force Kaigo in a 2v1 situation, but you always have to respect the Galio coming in from across the map, it can turn into a 2v2 very, very quickly. So if you're TNC, you need to be very careful with some of the fights that you pick up here because the global from that gallery can always affect the outcome. And meanwhile, again, that's just a lot of turrets that TNC is losing out on this point. Okay, looking at what TNC can do though, I mean, it's somewhat reliant on overwhelming a member of TNC by the numbers as well as it, it's almost like a fingers crossed that Mineski kind of makes a mistake that they could catch the Galio. But we can see it after what sa top side, which did not go in Mineski's favor. After that, it's been a little bit more cleaner from here. And I think it's not even just them playing clean. It's just that kahit sabi natin magkaroon ulit ng ganong opportunity, oh, Mineski's very well ahead. Orthros! Oh, Orthros! Ooh, that's gonna be a lockdown. Coming in from Gary, he tries to blow him away, but unfortunately it won't be enough. Damage is just too overwhelming from the marksman of Mineski. Yeah, walang well, SG Orthros, and so mukhang it's really no escape. And Gary, luckily enough, will land his chain of corruption. Will that lead to the Baron, though? It's very early to the game. Man, it's interesting uh, to know. Yeah, should have a Baron, though? <laughs> yep, they're gonna be going for Baron, but interesting to note that. So taking that way, you're focused to uh, go to the side of the TNC. Considering that Gaze is 0-2, he at least makes up for it in terms of CS, but if you're going to compare it just across the board to some NSP, it's a little bit far off. But looks like there's going to be a fight right here. Kaigu is choking it out with Caroline. Caroline tries to win it out 1v1, but oh, this might actually be Caroline's Whoa! moment as Kaigu goes down. Wow. Oh, they're still going, Arctic. Yep. Still going indeed. Hamas goes straight in for the back leg. Tries to get the town in onto Mirmo as well as first. Looks like that's going to be one member down in the form of Hayes. The rest of TNC, they have to back away. I want to see a replay of that 1v1. Yeah, but Hayes actually, or rather Hamas, still wants to go for more here. Just isolating Orthros as well as Mirmo away from this Baron pit. Just so that Mineski could at least maintain that control. Because it's... Pretty much shining red right now on the map, I gotta say. Yeah, but yun nga, regardless of that 1v1 win for Caroline, he's already proving that he's a better top laner than Map did at this point. He will solo kill Kaigu. Baron did still go over to Mineski, so they will be able to use that to seek down the members of TNT. Ngayon, the objective for Mineski, they need to break open the base. Yeah, and I think that was very well good on Caroline. Because, I mean, when we were showing the goal differences earlier, second to Haze was actually Caroline right there. So, kahit papano, Caroline's still at a... He's not... He hasn't fallen behind uh, in comparison to, let's say, maybe Mirmo or a reverse. He's still at a workable um, stand right now. Yeah, and with the Sterex gates completed for the Gangplank, it'll be actually easier for him to go in that 1v1 situation versus Kaigu's Camille because the Sterex will give him that extra shield once he does get low enough. So it looks like the Gangplank is actually having an okay time here. Yeah. Caroline, I guess all that experience from the Lenovo League of Champions definitely paying off for him. But that's just on the minor level. Looking at the bigger picture, it's still a bit of a climb here. At completing the new goal difference, it's already beyond the 10k mark. And we're only 23 minutes into the game, guys. Plus, this Baron just gonna barrel down these turrets from Mineski. Uh, from TNC rather. But I think we can see response from TNC Dito. But oh, Kaigu goes straight for Burst here. Burst tries to get the knock on to Kaigu to prevent it, but the damage is just too much. That's gonna be the takedown on TNC's jungle. Just a lot of Raptors Burst there. 
Yeah. Gusto lang niya i-clear yung jungle niya, kailangan siya patay ni Kaigo na yun. Oh! There's a flash in! Yeah, unfortunately, that is gonna be Orthros that gets pulled in, easily gets decimated by Mineski. But looks like Mineski, they can potentially go for the finish here. Are they gonna push for it though? They're going straight for this inhibitor turret. That's gonna be an easy inhibitor as well. TNC, they have to start defending. And like I mentioned, without burst on the map, that's the only form of engage the Rex side knockup. It's very difficult for them to lock down any members of Mineski. Unless they engage, there's really no way na pwede nilang pigilan yung Baron Empowered Push. Na ginagawa ng Mineski at the moment is Kaigu. He's chucking down this tower. I think he's gonna get it. Yeah, look at how efficiently he's just taking that down right now. Looks like he's gonna be backing away. Carolina and Mirmo, looks like they're gonna try to push for it though. Kaigu is gonna be forced to flash out. Gets slowed a bit by the Barrage, but easily makes the escape. Yeah, it's an easy escape for Kaigo. I mean, he just wanted the tower. Wait, did he actually get it? Oh Still no, it's Litherfeld. <laughs> it's one hit away. <laughs> Go back. Yeah, Kaigo's just kind of lingering here towards the bot side, but still TNT. Medyo nakikita na natin yung limit ng kaya nilang laharin dito sa mapa. They're kind of limited towards at least half of their jungle side. Overstepping that all the more, nakikita naman natin yung kung kanong kalawak yung coverage ng vision ng Actually, Mineski. Actually, feeling ko pag, lumampa, lumu ah, pag lumabas ng base, itong TNC, they're just gonna get jumped on by Mineski because looking at their comp, there's still no QSS. Mm -hmm. Basically, anyone na piliin ni Jun na gusto namin patayin, he's gonna die. Definitely. Yeah. And I think TNC, in all fairness, like, with the build paths that they're going for, maybe it's just at least to make sure that they contend in terms of what damage that they can exert, but... We'll just have to see how this goes. Mineski, though, is starting to bring the drought to TNC here. Nakita na natin yung efficiency nila na... I mean, TNC, let's try to see what advantages they can take and uh, try to look over as far as getting back into this game. Pwedeng just kind of farm up whatever waves come towards you. I mean, lahat nga ng minions dire-direcho pa punta sa base nila. So that's that option. They can't choose to just constantly clear this wave. Then, sino mabibili ni Jun? Jun, he wanted to drift in on the TNC, pero mukhang wala muna siya makuwang target. So Mineski is gonna try to get off this turret. Meanwhile, the takedown of Nikaigu is so inhibitor turret to the bot side. But look at the damage on the Caroline. That's almost a fourth of his health. That's a lot of damage. From That's the actually a, more than a fourth of his health, actually. I'm still waiting for Mineski to pull the trigger on an engage because there's still no way for TNT to actually get out unless Arthur can knock that Skarner back. And will we see a fight here? I don't know, man, but it's like Mineski, they just want in on this inhibitor first. Unti, unti, Nani Alang is going to squish on these sources. Nang TNC, and looks like that's going to be the final inhibitor down from the side of TNC. This is a massive defense that they have to put up if they still want to stay in the game for game two. Yeah, bumagsak na yung ikatlong inhibitor in TNC pro team ngayon. If they want to mount the defense, this is the stage. Yes. They have to do it now. Mirmo's trying to throw out a bit of damage right there, but that's gonna be the denial. June actually gets the pull in onto first, and he goes down. This could be the finish that Mineski is looking for. That's gonna be the lockdown onto Mirmo. Mirmo, he tries to duel it out, but no, unfortunately, Kaigo is just too over on his room. Orthos is the next to fall. Hayes and Caroline are forced to retreat into the safety of their base, but Mineski, they want to finish out this game. These are gonna be two Nexus turrets going down straight off the bat, and with four members of Mineski barreling on this Nexus, this is gonna be the picture perfect finish for them. He's, he's trying to do what he can at least take down the target, but Kari actually manages to get the snipe onto him. Caroline, though, he can't over push this. Looks like June TG as well as Kai, who are gonna finish this, things up for the Neski squad as game two goes to Mineski now at match point. Yeah, that's 2 0 already for Mineski right there. And another commanding win in a sense. I think this game TNC performed a bit better compared to game one, but still the struggles are very real for them. It looked like they're still a bit out of sync and Mineski are really jumping on that fact. So they are now on match point. Kung gusto ng TNC dito, they have to do it via reverse sweep. Yeah, and I don't know, man. Looking at that game though, kung you might want to think na, oh, it could be TNC adjusting to um, having Mirmo, having Caroline. Pero as early as the laning phase, let's say, take away the whatever influence yung meron ng marksman and top lane. I think just how, um, let's say for Hayes, for example, just in the mid lane, didn't go quite well either way. Even And that didn't even play in a fa as a factor within the earlier phases. So I do like the effort that TNC is showing though. But at the end of the day, will it at least transition to trying to push for a reverse sweep? That's still a massive question mark right now that's on my mind because Vineski, on the flip side, has been playing it absolutely beautifully. I mean, 
as a TNC fan myself, it's a bit tricky, but we'll just have to see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we need to wait for what's going to in Game 3 because it's not out ang TNC deal. They can still definitely mount that comeback, possibly take this all the way to five games. But Mineski, they've looked uh, very, very solid throughout the day. And we're yet to see who will end up representing us in the GPL. But I think we're going to take a short break before heading into Game 3. We have been your Shoutcasters. My name is Chisto and with me is Arctic. See you after the break. But Teleport is coming in from Mineski. The response is coming in. Both Kaigo as well as Havis joined the party. Fortunately, Burst is going to be the first one to fall. Orthos is looking very low as well. Yes, that's going to be a full initiate off the mirror. But unfortunately, Mineski, they might have overreached that a bit. Meanwhile, though, it's like Burst gets sniped out by Gary. That's a one for one so far. But I don't know if he's going to be able Gary might actually get locked in right there. Hamas a little bit in too late for the party. That's going to be Orthos swing away the members of Mineski. Hamas is doing looks like they're going to run to back away from this battle. Fuck him, Mineski Kaigo. The fight is fight in the mid lane. Looks like, oh, that's a beautiful hook coming in from TG, and that's just going to be Vase getting fully locked down by Ramon. Two Luna Nights into Orthos. Double kill para Dino Ray Gary, but things aren't done just yet. Tom is going to go for the straight knock in onto first. First, he tries to go for Gary. Will he get him, though? Looks like he will get restrained, though, by Juin. That's going to be a full down lock up. Kaido gets first, and looks like this might be the cleanup right here for Mineski. Caroline looking very, very low, and that's going to be the ace for Mineski. Yeah, and for Gary, you, that's definitely worth it. Kaido oh. is choking it out with Caroline. Caroline. Tries to win it out 1v1, but ooh, this might actually be a moment as Kaigu goes down. Wow. Alright, they're good. still going Arctic. Yep, still going indeed. Hamas goes straight in for the back leg. Let's get the town in onto Mirma as well as first. Looks like that's gonna be one member down in the form of Haze. The rest of the TNC they have to try to throw out a bit of damage right there, but that's gonna be the denial. June actually gets the pull in onto first and he goes down. This could be the finish that Mineski is looking for. That's gonna be the lockdown onto Mirma. Mirma, he tries to duel it out, but no, unfortunately, Kaigu is just too overwhelming here. Orcos is the next to fall. Haze and Caroline are forced to retreat into the safety of their base, but Mineski. They want to finish off this game. These are going to be two Nexus turrets going down straight off the bat. And with four members of Mineski barreling on this Nexus, this is going to be the picture perfect finish for them. Ace, he's trying to do what he can. At least take down the target, but Carry actually manages to get the snipe onto him. Caroline, though, he can't over push this. It's like June GG as well. As Kai, who are going to finish things up for the Mineski squad as game two goes to Mineski now at match point. Now that's 2-0 already for Mineski right there in another command. Days are cold and the cards all fold and the saints we see are all made of gold.